So we did a fantastic thing in 2012. We went to Chichen Itza, but we also created a conference that we call Beyond 2012. So, and you can Google the Chichen Itza event for 2012 at Hertak Chichen Itza. But after that, we had this amazing conference, 1,500 people in Cancun. And the whole idea was the fact that there was so much more. We knew it was never going to be the end of the world because this planet has a purpose. Each person has a purpose and there's also a level of higher intelligence that's actually watching this planet. Now this involves extraterrestrial intelligence, but it also involves what we call ultra terrestrial intelligence. And we believe that there's a whole, and this is the work of the keys of Enoch, Dr. Herdeck's first book and the teachings connected with this, that there's a whole cosmology connected with this planet. And that each person actually has kind of an inner guidance that's not just w without anything going on it's actually a connection to their higher self in fact there's a book we wrote called the over self and this takes you through 72 phases of evolutionary growth even going to certain sacred sites on the world around the world and saying uh energizing the site connecting with that site so this is the phases of growth that really every soul is all about but it also is about connecting with higher messengers and really a divine godhead that connects you to a greater reality. And we've seen this in young people throughout the world at universities in Brazil, Chile, Europe, Africa, who are able to look beyond the horizons of Mother Earth and realize there has to be answers and directions of how we can all cooperate, not only through the information revolution, not only through the medical revolution, but also to the realization that if we look at the cosmos, we realize in the trillions of star possibilities, we are not alone and that we must learn to see our baby steps into outer space as preparing us for building not only cities in space, but pioneering a whole new environment of cooperation with the greater evolutionary process. Now, William, you had some interesting ideas from our seminar. Yes, um, on during Saturday in the seminar, uh, Dr. Hertog was speaking uh, of moving from a theology into a cosmology of consciousness. Um, I just wanted to ask him a little bit more and to go into depth on on what he the meaning behind uh, what he was saying. Right. I know many theologians like uh, the late uh, Christopher uh, Stendhal at Harvard University or uh, Dr. Ted Peters at uh, UC Berkeley here in California who believe in what is called exo-theology, a theology of outer space. Why? Because we'll be living in outer space. We'll be having colonies on Mars and beyond. And with the evidence holds up of what some of the astronauts that we work with, like Gordon Cooper, suggest, there are life forms already in outer space that have their own belief system that may or may not tie into our concept of life, our concept of God. And I think the evidence in the encounters with higher intelligence, I will call ultra-terrestrial, not extraterrestrial, but ultra-terrestrial, will help us, shall we say, answer the basic questions. Are we alone in the universe? Is there God? Is there a purpose of life? All of these questions will be resolved. And through my personal experience, I know that there is a divine mind, a Godhead that reaches out to us through love, through the message of the Christ in the New Testament, that we are part of what he called the house of many mansions. And so as we go from the formalism of earthbound theology that tends to separate people according to culture and national tradition into one that sees us unified as a people of God that understands the message of Christ, we begin to realize, well, we need more than a theology. We need a cosmology of consciousness. We need to realize that we are active participants in this greater cosmos, this house of many mansions. Right, so there's really two aspects of evolution that every person on this planet is going through. One is we're going to evolve into realizing that we're not alone in the universe. Not just bacterial life that may be found in Europa or somewhere like that, but actual a variety of extraterrestrial intelligences. Some that look like us, some that don't look like us. In fact, the ones that look like us are more 
unusual because that means that our genetic code exists in other places of the universe and it wasn't evolved just by happenstance here and now and the second aspect though is the inner evolution the inner growth to recognize the higher levels of intelligence that are also here to help guide us and direct us and so when you put the two together we have a very very bright future we have a uh, way of transforming the planet. In fact, you know, Einstein used to meditate every day, and I believe that's how he got a lot of his insights. So we can have, we can tap into that universal mind and find ways to really help and transform the planet. It has to come through a greater compassion, a greater love, and a greater sharing. Many of Einstein's uh, students and colleagues at Princeton didn't want people to know that Einstein, towards the end of his life, became very spiritual. And we knew the architect that uh, uh, knew his his whereabouts in Palm Springs while he was out in California during World War II and thereafter. Uh, we, we know also through great scientists at Stanford Research Institute and also in Russia that many scientists are becoming spiritually aware that spirituality is not the same as religion. Religion, which tends to restrict people to one point of view, spirituality teaches through the Holy Spirit, in our definition, a sense of beloved understanding of all of life, to see the spark of God in all humanity, and to realize the divine potential we have and what could be called the new image of humanity, the realization that the great prophetic teaching does have a relevance for the 21st century, that ultimately, as we are told in the Psalms of King David, humanity shall be one and the kingdom of God should be manifest. So this is a great time to go beyond suffering, to go beyond isolation, to see the unity of the spiritual and scientific coming together in a higher synthesis. This is why we are future scientists, because we believe in the future. We believe that there always will be a positive future if we seek it, and that science itself will grow into an understanding of the sacredness of life. All right, with that being said, I just wanted to end it. Um with a brief meditation of just some things that were going through my mind and I wanted to uh, speak out and uh, end. Um, so with many young people and people, uh, humans alike, experiencing extraterrestrial and ultra-terrestrial contact, uh, know that you are not alone and know that there is an understanding and that there is wisdom and that there is teachings that you can go and have understanding of your experience and then move forward into this higher evolution that we are uh, co-creators and co-participants in. In the Father's house of many mansions, beloved friends and colleagues throughout the world, this is a time when miracles of the mind and spirit are being combined. May the Spirit of God be with us and may the Dove, the symbol of the Holy Spirit of a spirit of peace be within us. And let us remote view throughout the universe because we have that potential. Thank you, William, and thank all of you for tuning in.